Have you ever wanted to try botanical painting but really don't know where to start? Well in this video I'm going to show you how to paint this pretty agapanthus with watercolour. Let's get into it. But let's talk about materials really quickly. I'm using this watercolour block. It's a cold press 50% cotton paper and I've already traced down my drawing but when you get these blocks they come with a black sheet like this and you just need to remove it. Now, as you can see, I've done an outline of the agapanthus flower like this, but don't worry if you have trouble drawing or you don't like it because we provide you with a free traceable drawing. I print out a black and white photo like this and I scribble on the back and just trace it down the old fashioned way using a 0.5 mechanical pencil, as you can see here. Now we do provide you with a free reference photograph and line drawing, and I'll tell you later on in this video how you can obtain them. The paints that I've decided to use for this painting are by A. Gallo, um, but use whichever brand that you have within your own set. Don't worry about having the same brand as me, you can use whatever you have. These are the colours that I'm going to be using, Fig, Sap, Olive Green Deep, Tyrian Purple and Quinacridone Red Gold. And you will invariably have similar colours within your own set. And if you have trouble matching your colours, um, just drop me a comment in the comment box below and I'll be able to help you. All of the materials I'm going to be using today I will list in the description box underneath this video. The brushes that I'm using are from Etcher and I'm going to be probably using a number three and a number two size and a number two flat from Rosemary Co that I use for blending, clean glass of water, kitchen paper and of course my favourite mixing palette which are by Etcher in a pack of two here and they have plenty of wells to mix up their ceramic so they don't stain. So if you're new to watercolour painting, um, watercolour is all about building up your colours from light to dark. So to begin with, we need to put in our initial wash. So to do that, I'm going to do some little puddles of uh, different colours here. The middle puddle that you can see is just plain water and I'll explain why I do that as we work through. This is the colour chart that I've used and I'll explain to you how I use that to match my colours in the video that's linked on your screen above. I've mixed a light watery wash of Tyrian Purple on one palette here and the other puddle you can see is Tyrian Purple with a tiny bit of Olive Green Deep. Now Olive Green Deep with the A Gallo set is very similar to Daniel Smith's um, Undersea Green if you know that colour, but any Olive Green will do. Using my number three size brush, you can see me here working wet on dry, which simply means that I'm applying the colour straight onto the watercolour paper like this, leaving little gaps here and there with full control of my brush. As I work through, you'll notice that I'm cleaning my brush in the middle puddle on my palette here. That means I'm not flooding my brush with water to clean it, because sometimes when you do that, the brush becomes saturated with water and that goes straight onto your paper and we don't want that. So by having this little puddle in the middle of your palette, it really helps you control your paint. Now, as I said at the start, watercolour is all about building up your colours from light to dark and having control over the application process. So if you are new to watercolour, I highly recommend that you watch this video all the way through so that we can push past what we call the ugly duckling stage and you can see this picture come to life. So just apply a mixture of these two puddles, as you can see here. Because this puddle is a granulating colour, that's the olive green deep, you need to keep sort of uh, mixing it around to make sure that the pigments are distributed in the water. This is my number one size round. These brushes are from Etcher and they are absolutely wonderful. They have very fine points and they are synthetic, which I absolutely adore. So I will link those in the description box if you'd like to check them out for yourself. But of course, use whichever brushes that you feel comfortable with that you have within your own set. Notice how I'm using the damp brush to blend any hard edges and just carrying on the process, painting in these little purple agapanthus heads, as you can see. Now this agapanthus flower isn't in full bloom, it's kind of at that lovely bud stage which I really liked when I took the photograph, I thought it would be a, a really good introduction to botanical painting. So I hope you join in with this tutorial and um, have fun with it and learn as you go. 
So here are the greens that I'm mixing. Now this is a fig green, which is a really kind of a lemony green, and I'm mixing it here with a little bit of sap and also a little bit of olive. You can see how bright this green is. This is sap green going on here with a tiny bit of fig. So we have this really kind of acidic green color. This is my number, actually this is my number six size brush, so I did use it in the end. I'm walk, working down the stem like this, applying the color straight onto the watercolor paper. This is 50% cotton, and I have to say it's absolutely beautiful to use. The paint doesn't float on the surface of the paper that you can sometimes get with less expensive watercolour papers. This one was an absolute joy to work with, so thank you Etcher for sending me this paper to try out. And as I said earlier on, I will link all the materials in the description box below if you want to check it out for yourself. Having applied the first layer of paint, and while the paint is still wet, you can see me dropping in a darker tone on the side there. So we still have that sap green mixed with the fig. Working all the way down the stem like this. So this is a mixture of olive green with a tiny bit of Tyrian purple, and you can see I'm just dropping it in. This is wet on wet. We are effectively charging that paint up with a different color. Using the tip of my brush to just drop in that color as I work through. You can join in with this video and pause it as you work through, just to make sure that you are applying the colors slowly and carefully. Now, at the very start of this video, I mentioned that we provide you with a free line drawing and reference photograph so that you can join in with all of our tutorials here on YouTube. And if you'd like to know how to obtain them, here is how. A couple of ways that you can access our free reference photographs and line drawings. We have our very own private Facebook group and as a member you can access all of them here. There is another way and I'll tell you about that in a moment and in case you're not a Facebook fan and I know it's not for everybody I just want to reassure you that our group is really friendly, really helpful and informative and you can also post up your finished paintings and have feedback from me and our other group members. You can see here some of the completed works in the student gallery. Having positive feedback from your paintings is a great way to learn and a really amazing confidence booster. If this is something that interests you, I'll put a link to the Facebook group in the description underneath this video. But if Facebook really isn't for you, then don't worry because I'll put a screenshot of the line drawing and the reference photograph right at the end of this video. So be sure to stay right until the end and you can print it off that way. So now that our first wash is dry, you can see me just adding our green tones and just working through in each segment at a time. Now, I don't know what these parts are called. I was going to say petals, but of course, I don't know what they are. So if you do know what these parts are called, then drop it in the comments below because I would like to know. So working through, we have our sap green and our fig green working on these little elements here. And remember, these are just our initial washes and we're going to be building on them bit by bit. If you are new to this channel, we, we do release new content every Tuesday, so you may want to consider subscribing and hitting that little bell notification on the side there. That way you won't miss new content every single week when we release on a Tuesday. If you are enjoying this video, please give it a like. It's a way of letting YouTube know that you're enjoying my content and it means that more people can see it and it will help my channel grow. I've mixed here a petal of quinacridone red gold. This is a kind of, um, it's very similar to, I guess, a burnt umber, something like that. So if you have that one in your set, you could use that. And I've mixed it with a tiny bit of Tyrian purple to start the beginnings of these kind of papery folds that are underneath the flower head like this. So this is Tyrian purple with a tiny bit of the quinacridone red gold. And I'm just applying a tiny bit of this same color here, but with a small bit of olive green mixed in. 
So any of these kind of papery like creases that you see here, we can put this on and let it settle into the paper before we start to build up our layers a bit by bit. I'm sorry that the sun is shining really brightly on my paper here at the moment. Um, I have a glass roof to my studio and unfortunately it's a little bit out of my control. So just bear with me and in a moment or two it'll return back to normal as you can see. Okay, just working through bit by bit, picking up that green tone with the quinacridone red gold and just carefully applying it to the bottom part of this papery element here. This is my number one size round brush and you can see that the, the tip of the brush is really pointy which means I can have really fine detail and really good control as I work through. So carefully applying that paint bit by bit and when everything's dry I've cleaned up my palette and we're going back to the original mix of Tyrian Purple and the Olive Green Deep and you can see the colours that I've mixed up here. Because the paint is now dry we can work on each of these individual elements in turn and just apply the paint where we think we need it to start to build up our colours one by one. And again, I'm always cleaning my brush, patting it on the kitchen paper and then blending it like this. It's really important that you pat the brush dry because if you don't, it will just blur that paint into the paper and you don't want that. So just carrying on and just working through these little elements one by one. If botanical painting is your thing and you really want to take your paint into the next level, we do have a Patreon where we release new content every month for a full length botanical painting tutorial. So let's just take a closer look. Now all of our tutorials on YouTube are free and full length, but if you really love the idea of botanical painting but are not sure where to start, then you may want to head over to our Patreon where we post brand new botanical painting tutorials every month. We have different membership levels to suit you and of course you won't find any of our Patreon tutorials here on YouTube and they are free of those annoying ads. So if you want to learn how to paint botanicals that you can be proud of, then I will link it in the description below and it's also a way for you to support my channel. And we're also on Instagram at The Wonders of Watercolour if you want to join us there. Little behind the scenes snippets and a few fun reels, all that kind of stuff. So if you want to join us on Instagram, then do take a look. We'd love to have you there as part of our growing community. Notice how I'm using the Terry and Purple mix on the tip of my brush to continue building up those colours. As I said earlier on in this video, if you are struggling with any of the colours, do let me know in the comments underneath this video and I will always do my best to try and help you match up the colours that you have within your own set so that you can join in. This is Terry in purple and I'm just building up each flower head in turn. Working through and notice how I'm using that damp brush just to wiggle those hard edges to blend them into the paper. We don't want any hard edges, just that lovely soft natural blur. So here we have the quinacridone red gold again, this time with a tiny bit of the olive green deep. And I'm just applying them to the elements that are left unpainted. This is Tyrian purple with olive green deep. The idea here is that we want each element of the plant to look different from the adjoining one. So again we're going back to fig and sap and any areas of these little stems that need brightening up I'm just applying fig and sap mixed together. If you have anything like a Holbein leaf green that would also work very well here. So we have Tyrian purple with olive green deep. Thank you. 
just enhancing a few areas here and there. Just by adding that mixture of sap and fig, it really brightens up the stem. And again, going through that mix and just adding a tiny bit of detail on the bud there and dropping it in here just to brighten up and darken some of the values on this element. Just dropping it in little by little and using this opportunity to sharpen up the outside edge. The important thing about watercolour when you're working this way is making sure that each layer is absolutely dry before you attempt the next. Here I'm adding the purple mix underneath the element where the stem hits the flower just to give it a bit more detail. This isn't quite true to the photograph but I feel that it needs a little bit of shadow here so adding this purple mix here just works a treat. And also using this opportunity once again to sharpen up any untidy edges. Just adding uh, the same mixture of sap green with fig green. And dropping in the purple on the side. We don't want the stem to look flat. So dropping in that purple tone. And because that's where we've applied the sort of wet mix, the water, water repaint, it's just dropping into the, the damp areas on the paper. So over in the UK, this flower is called Agapanthus. Um, I think that's how we generally call it, but I think its popular name is African Lily. Um, I've never actually heard it called that. I found out about this the other day. So I don't know what you call it. Let me know in the comments. But over here in the UK, I think it's uh, commonly known by its uh, Latin name, I think, which is Agapanthus. It's commonly known as an Agapanthus flower. So let me know what you call this beautiful plant. Again, mixing the Tyrian purple with olive green deep and just flit in between each of these little stems and applying the darker values where we think we need them. You can see how I'm just building up the colours, picking up the colours from my palette and just working through bit by bit, using my reference photograph as a guide. So here we have a fig green with a tiny bit of sap and again the purpley green mix for the base of this part here. Notice how those colours are merging together and just a damp brush will help any hard edges um, just disappear. I'm taking the leaf and the fig, sorry, the fig green and the sap green down this part and I'm going to let that dry before I add any detail and just going over any bits that I feel need strengthening with this colour. You can see I'm just using this opportunity to go around the outside of some of the elements here. This is Tyrian Purple with Olive Green Deep and because the paint has dried slightly on my palette it just means that I've got a little bit more control. So if you're working on smaller areas it's worth noting that your paint 
it's better to be dry in your palette as mine is here. This time I'm adding a tiny bit of quinacridone red gold to the equation and using this opportunity and now I'm just using this paint to add a bit of veining here and there. Now in this time I'm not going straight strictly to the photograph again, I just wanted to give the idea of there being some veins and of course we will be adding a little bit more detail later on as we work through the tutorial. So a good tip is make sure that your paint is dry when you're applying smaller areas like this. It just means that you have better control of your paint. Once again, the same process, cleaning my brush, patting it on the kitchen paper and blending it through this way. This is the Tyrian Purple mix here and just starting to put some detail in using a very very light touch this is my number one size brush and because it has such a beautiful fine point it means i can start to put these veins in really really easily using a feather light touch just removing the pressure from my hand there so that i can really have full control of the application of these veins Just sharpening up this element here and adding a little vein down the section of this papery section that's coming down at the side. A light mix of Tyrian Purple and blending it through. That's Tyrian Purple with the tiny bit of Olive Green Deep. And we're back to Quinacridone Red Gold. I'm just adding a little bit of colour here and to the tip. Once everything's completely dry, we can now start to build up the rest of the elements here. So we're back to these two colours, Olive Green Deep and Tyrian Purple. And I've also mixed them together here on the petal that you can see at the bottom of my palette. And this has made this lovely kind of greyish brown tone. Applying this here, as you can see. And continuing this process, working through bit by bit. Notice how I'm leaving a little gap in the middle here. It just gives it a little bit of form. And as I said, I'm not going strictly to the photograph, we're just using it as a guide so that we can get this agapanthus um, looking as realistic as we can, but without too much stress. So working around the outside, just sharpening up any edges here, cleaning my brush as usual and blending through. Just sharpening up the outside here and adding a bit of a darker value at the top. By working in small areas at a time, it just means that you have better control over your watercolour paint. So here we have the mixture of olive, olive green deep and tyrian purple. And sharpening up this element here. You can see by adding this darker value to the outside edge of this little bud it's made it sort of pop to life. And I'm using the mixture of olive green deep here just to outline and separate those two stems. And just continuing the process.
So we've still got a little bit of uh, way to go on this painting and you can see the colours that I've mixed here on my palette. I'm going to stop talking and I'll let you listen to some music for the rest of this tutorial because the process is exactly the same as I work through. Now remember to stay right until the end where I'm putting the reference photograph for you to print out and trace down if you want to along with a simple pencil line drawing for you to see where I put the pencil line so you can screenshot those and um, print them out yourself if you want to join in. I'm going to stop talking and let you watch the rest of this, listen to some lovely relaxing music and um, I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.